Well, what's up, guys? Happy Thursday evening. I hope you guys are having a good day. This is another tutorial for Photoshop, Creative Cloud, Adobe, you know, that, that basic. So if you guys want to follow along, go ahead and load Photoshop now. Uh, what I'm teaching, what I'm going to go over, works in every, should be the same for every Photoshop out there. If you have CS6, CS5, whatever. If you don't have any Photoshop or anything of that nature, go. you can use the link in the description to download a free trial of Creative Cloud, and which includes all the programs. So let's just get started. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over. Let's share the entire screen, shall we? Share. And there we go. Oh, by the way, my friend Dominic is part of the Hangout. So if you guys want to be part of the Hangout later on in future workshops, just let me know, and I'll give you the information. So basically, what we're going to go over is how to do these kind of light streak, galaxy style effects that's so common with a lot of trending graphics on the web nowadays. So I'll be showing you basically the easiest technique to achieve this kind of effect. Not this image exactly, but you know, you get you get the basics of it. But first let's go over colors and lights and darks and things of that nature because in order to fully use the technique to your advantage, you have to understand how colors react in certain modes and things of that nature. So typically with web graphics, you get RGB, any kind of screen work, red, green, blue. So we'll just put up only web colors, and then we'll do a 255 red. Let's do, and then we can rasterize that, rasterize the layer. And then we can do a green. I'll just type it in right, right quick. Sorry, that, and then blue. So if you're wondering, in this color picker, you can actually choose between only web colors and a full spectrum of colors, just because you can use Photoshop for print purposes if needed be. But also my document is currently in RGB mode. If you don't know how to change that or you don't know how to set that, I'll go over that. It, just ask in the comments and I'll kind of go over that in a different workshop. Okay, so here we have red, well, that was blue. We have red, green, and blue on separate layers. And basically the layer effect that I'm going to be going over, the two layer effects I'm going to be going over, layer modes, whatever you want to call them, are in this drop-down menu on your layers palette, screen, box, whatever you refer it to as. And its default set is normal. So it will just stand alone as that. But I'm going to go over screen, which is one that shows brighter colors on darker backgrounds. It's almost the exact opposite of multiply. So multiply darkens, greens, lighten. Get that? And I'll also go over color. And this colors your image underneath if it, as it gets darker. Let me explain that. So screen. So right now, all three rectangles are in screen mode. So if I was to change the background, and you can access the paint, just go to the gradient, click it, and you get the paint bucket tool. I'm just going to make the background black, and the colors appear. The colors appear perfectly fine, and then it's on normal mode. These are screen. These are going to show up totally light. And then bring the opacity down, and of course, they'll do that. Same with normal, doesn't make any difference. Multiply, they disappear, they show up on white. So that's the biggest difference between multiply and screen, but we won't be using multiply because we're trying to make the galaxy, we're trying to bring light into the image, etc., etc., etc. So we'll just leave it at screen. Color, so let's talk about color. So color disappears on black and on white because it colors grays, because black is the absence of light and white is light entirely. So if we were to bring down the opacity of this black layer, the color starts to show more. But you see how the green layer kind of looks a little muddy versus the red and blue layers? That's uh, things you have to consider when you're working with the different galaxy colors, because more than likely for beginners, for a lot of you guys, are probably going to go to 
stock galaxy websites or GVNR or Google Images to search up nebulas and galaxies and things of that nature. And this is how these colors have the tendency to react. Like immediately the blue starts showing first, and then the red, and then the green. And as it fades out, the blues fade out first. But I'm not going to go into the science behind that. That's that's that whole why is the dress black and blue discussion, and I'm not getting into that. So that's your basic how color and screen work, and those are the two I'm going to go over in this workshop. I think I've said that a million times. Okay, so that's your basic color demo. Now let's actually get on to the image, which I know a lot of people are kind of excited for. So you want to get an image that allows for a lot of movement, a lot of kind of flowiness to it. So let me pull up an example. So the model I'm using is Ariana Grande, just because she's popular right now, and I just think she'd be an interesting model to do this for. So when looking for a model image, the for the best effect, for the best execution for this effect, I would highly suggest you use models in positions that look kind of free. Like, if you look at this image of her, she seems kind of like static, like she's very tense, versus the one I'm using, which is this one. It's kind of free, like it, she's more open, it's a lot more natural, the hair and everything of that nature. So go ahead and you can pull up that image I already have. I'm cheating. You can already pull up the image in Photoshop. And for those who are curious, Photoshop, I highly suggest, would be the only program to do this in from the Adobe software collection. Illustrator doesn't allow as um, much capabilities as Photoshop does, so that's why I'm using Photoshop. So then what you want to search for is galaxies. But you don't have to stop at galaxies because you're going to get a lot of those eyeball-looking galaxies or, you know, like these kind of galaxies. And that is a cool effect. It's a cool design, but it's not going to work for everything. So what I would what I would suggest you search, in addition to just searching galaxies, is nebulas. When you search nebulas, you'll start getting more of the more free-flowing stars. You'll start getting shapes, because a lot of people like to create nebula stock, uh, stock images, not stock as in uh, money but or investments. But you'll start getting more open, and you, there's a lot more to play with. My favorite stock nebula stock creator is Moonchild. So I always just search up Moonchild with an E at the end, Nebula. And I highly suggest, because I'll show this tool later, but don't go crazy when it comes to searching for your resources. Don't search light blue with a hint of pink and a couple of stars, nebula, because you're never going to find that. Instead, we're going to create it. So looking at this image of Ariana Grande, you don't have to use this image, whatever. I want to focus more getting the galaxy to kind of wrap around her. So I'm looking for galaxy images, nebula images that kind of have that wrappy kind of... It, it allows for that motion. And again, I'm going to so, also going to show you a tool to manipulate these images so that way you're not working with such a static nebula. I'm not liking that. Mm. The struggle is real. Yeah, let's just use that one. Let's just use that one. This is very common. Okay, so I'm going to copy the image, right click copy, and then control V uh, to paste it. And you can see like it's way not going to fit the entire entirety of the canvas. But that's fine. That's okay. We can always resize it. Control T. Again, I'm using a PC, so I don't know what the shortcut key is for Max. I apologize. But we're going to go and click screen because we want it to kind of pop out. And instantly, you start seeing her dress underneath. And you can see that it's taking more shape. You can start seeing the galaxy, the image of the galaxy more in the darker areas than you can where she's kind of going more white and more light. Like As you can see in her chest area, the kind of galaxy disappears, but as it gets to the black areas of her dress, it starts to appear more, which is what we want. But you can see that 
around the edges, there's a harsh edge around. See that? That is a harsh edge. We don't want that. So what you can do is you can go to Image, Adjustments, and then Levels. And this is a nice way to fix your image to whatever image you're adding the Galaxy or Nebula to, especially with stock images because they're not 100% black. And this is what I like to do, and I'll show you a different way to get rid of it if you don't feel like doing the step. But I always typically go on the black left side of the input levels of your level adjustments. I put in 25, and you can see that harsh line disappears. But then with that, everything darkens. So you kind of lose a little bit with the orange and the purples that were currently in there. So I will bump that up to maybe a 30. And then we start regaining the density of the nebula image. And then the, the higher this middle number goes, the lighter the grays would end up being, and then the lower the darker it is, and I kind of want to make it a little lower, so 0 0.95. I know it's barely a difference, but minor adjustments always make a big deal to me. So I keep forgetting there's no control. Can I get rid of these smart guides? There we go. Okay, cool. So as you can see, this this is looking pretty good, pretty good. I like, I like this area. I don't like that dust of orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control T, Transform Tool, and I'm going to just turn it and kind of fit it to her body, like so. And there you go. Like, we can go back. And this is the other route to making that harsh line disappear if you don't want to do the levels technique. You can just create a mask, and I highly suggest doing masks, not the eraser tool, because if you use the eraser tool, that part of the image is gone versus a mask is a little bit more forgiving and you can actually get a little bit tighter with what you erase and what you can get back. So doing the brush, I'm just going to take a basic brush, a soft edge brush, so hardness of zero, and I'm going to bump it up to maybe 250 pixels. That works for me. Zoom in a little bit and I want to get rid of this dusty area because I want the galaxy to really fit around her and not light up the back of the image yet. So I'm just going to go in and make sure your foreground color is black. You can always, like, to adjust how much gets disappeared, because like opacity levels, you can always change that as well, but when it comes to opacity using the layer, like, everything disappears. Let me show you. So let's say I want to just make this gone. So I'll use the black brush, I'll use a black foreground, and I'll start clicking, clicking. Mm, where are you? Why aren't you looking? Brush tool, capacity. Oh, normal. Make make sure the mode is normal. And then see, it starts disappearing. And I just want to go in and get rid of this area. Right there. So see, that doesn't look too natural. Like, you kind of can see that there, there was some sort of erasing gone there. So that's why I'm saying that you can always adjust the brush size and get a little bit more within that which is also very helpful. And I'm just going to open it up up here. Maybe I want a little bit of that orange. I want a little bit of that orange, but I don't want it to be as vibrant as it once was. So I'll just go to, you're still using on the mask, on the mask of the same layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change the foreground color. So maybe I don't want it that bright. Because the brighter it is, the more it shows. So I chose what would be the all six hex code. And those are hex codes, by the way, if you didn't know that term. And I'll just go over and see. It starts showing it again, but it's not as bright as it was before. I'm not liking that, though. And then anywhere that it gets where it's white, it starts to, starts to darken. Anywhere that it was black, it lightens. So let's regain that. Get that back. 
Maybe I want it a little darker. And again, you can always you you don't have to use the only web colors. You can use the you can use the full spectrum of colors to really get exactly where you want. Just keep in mind that on the very left is your absolute grayscale, as I like to call it, where you don't have any kind of color added to it. Like when you start getting here in these areas, you start seeing a little bit, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but you can start seeing a little bit of the hue pick up in the area. So I, that's why I stick with the only web colors. But we can do that. And then maybe I want to get rid of that over here. Maybe I don't want that over there. And one dark in this area over here. Okay. So then, just that bit. There we go. I'm not satisfied with that. I want to go and I want to add something on to her left side as well. So go back, going back to my Google search, my Google image search. I'm going to search up for something different. How about this? I like this. It's a little on the smaller side. So let's never mind. Let's look for something bigger because this is a pretty big image. So, how about this? Yeah, this is pretty large. Wait for it to load, because if you don't wait for it to load, from my experience, it doesn't show properly when you paste it. So, let's go in, paste it, and then again, screen. So, but first let me show you what the difference between doing a screen versus a, a color because I said I was also going to go over the color. You can go color, and as you can see, the orange is now gone. Because whatever your top layer is, if it's in color, it's going to color everything beneath it in those colors. So you can see that the nebula in the normal image had purples and blues, so you're going to start seeing the purples and blues in the color in on Ariana herself which is not a bad effect if that's what you're going for, but that's not what we're going for in this workshop. I mean, if you want to stop it there, then by all means. But anything black and white, black and white always color black or white. Whether it's 100% white, 100% black, you will grayscale it down. That's a cheap way to, an easy way, and a more kind of forgiving way to make your images black and white, but you're not kind of sure if you want it black and white yet, you know what I mean? So let's go to screen. And one, I'm not liking how big it is. So we'll go and kind of makes her armpit look like it's glowing. We don't want that. So we'll, we'll make it right around here. I'm just going at the top of my head. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit just so that way it kind of fits to her body a little bit more. Okay. So, it was too big. I tilted it a bit. And the color is just crap. So, go to... You can either do hue, saturation, or vibrance. My personal favorite is vibrance. For brightening colors, just because you get... You're adjusting the vibrance and the saturation. Versus hue and saturation, you're just adjusting the hue, and I'll get into that because I'm going to do that with this gal with this nebula, and only the saturation. So I'll bump up the vibrance all the way, and then the saturation uh, a little more by a little bit. I mean increments of 25. And let's go back to 75. So there, and then I'll go back to my levels adjustments, and then do the same. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. This isn't an exact art is not a science. So maybe I don't want maybe I want the darker areas to be a little bit more darker. So I'll, maybe I'll go to 35 instead and then do a 0 0.9 instead of a 0 0.95 because the center really does make a huge difference just because it's the wider array within the given because the two triangles, the black one and the white one or like the light gray one, that's what you're gray in the middle is kind of stuck to. So it makes a huge difference even with the minor increment changes. And then I'll bring this to a 50 instead of a 55. Let me tell it darker. 85. Let's go area, and I'm pretty sure that's the background, but that, that's what's tripping me up. Okay, so 
And there's still a harsh line at the bottom, as you can see with the purple. So I'm just going to create a mask. And then I'm going to make sure this is 100% black because I want that gone. Bring that up. And then fix it that way. And what I do because of uh, with nebulas is I don't do a single stroke like this, or I try to avoid to do that. Control Z to go back. Instead, I click. So that way, it because galaxies aren't perfect. Like people, they have their rough edges. They have their um, you know kind of points that make that give them their definite shape. So what clicking does instead of using a drag, it allows for more area to be shown and kind of adjust the shape in small quantities. Okay, so that's cool. Yeah, it's a cool little galaxy, I guess. I don't like that color. I don't, because it does not match with the purple. Well, it doesn't match with the purple and the orange galaxy that we have underneath. Again, the eyeball tool, you can go and you can go back and forth and use it as needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to hue and saturation. And what this top bar does is the further you pull it to the left or the right, the more the colors are going to change. But not just a single color, all the colors in the image are going to change accordingly. So <clears throat> watch the galaxy on her left side begins to change color as I pull this little knob to the left. See, it's getting bluer, now it's going into the teal, green, and then finally we're in like that limish, yellowish color. And then red robin it all the way back to the beginning, so minus 180 and 180 are practically the same color. So I want it to be a little bit more on the orange side. A little bit more. Yeah, 105. 105 would do fine. Okay. Again, saturation. You can bump up the saturation as needed. Uh, I don't need to with this image. So I'll go back to zero. And then lightness. This lightens the entire image, even if it's screen. And especially because it's screen, all the white is going to show instead of having the little black areas that's kind of needed to give the galaxy its full effect. <clears throat> so there you go. We have that. And maybe I'm not feeling it anymore. Now, because this is something that I've learned throughout the years, is that once you start making changes like this, things start to pop out in different ways, and maybe you're not satisfied with what you originally had because of the minor change, even though it's kind of like a big a color is a big change. So I'm just going to go and adjust accordingly. Bring that up. There we go. Happy little cloud. If you don't know that reference, you're probably way too young. So... Again, just make changes as needed when it comes to the galaxies. They don't have to be perfect, but you have to make sure you're not getting those grays in there. You're not getting... because you want it to pop out. You want it to be bright. So, yeah, this is a very red image. So let's do one more galaxy just for demonstration's sake and because her head, her hair area looks kind of empty. And these are cool. These light effects are cool. I might use them. I might not. You know, it would make this a lot easier if I ch was to go and bring the search down. Large. Again, large images you can scale down. Small images you cannot scale up because then they will not look right. So I want something not too... Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Okay. Hopefully it's not blurry or pixelated. There we go. Cool, cool. So I'm pulling this. Same issue I had with the purple galaxy that we changed into orange and red. I'm going to change this as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a screen effect like before. I know a lot of you guys would be satisfied, a lot, especially a lot of you uh, newer designers that are trying to really learn Photoshop and things of that nature. See, look, it almost kind of automatically fits to her hair, which is pretty cool. Like, this is what you're looking for. But if you really want to get specific with it, what you can do is you can right-click while it's in the transform mode, 
And do you have free transform, scale, rotate, skew, distort, perspective, and warp? For things like this, if you really wanted to capture the shape of your model or whatever you're doing this to, maybe a cup, maybe an orange, maybe your dog, whatever it may be, maybe another galaxy if you feel so inclined to do so, just click warp. And what this does is it gives you a 3x3 three three grid that spans across the size of your image. And you can use these anchor points to start warping the image shape. See that? See how it's starting to curve a little bit more? And so I wanted to go and... And this tool, this warping tool, this warping option, transform thing, takes a little bit of getting used to because one thing, one position change of an anchor can change a whole lot. As you can see, like just doing this little section starts affecting, even though this anchor is in the left, top left box, it affects things in the top right box as well. And even some things in the center box. So just practice makes perfect, of course. So go back to free transform, double click, or you can just click off and it'll ask you if you want to apply the changes and you can say yes or cancel if whether you're satisfied with it or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do levels first because I feel like some areas are just way too bright. 25, there we go. That's a nice, that's nice. Again, whatever your model, fit to what your model is because this is a very high contrasting image of Ariana. Just to let you know. Some, people, some of you guys might be working with things that are kind of more on the neutral side, like you may not have as much absolute black or absolute white within your image. And I didn't edit the image previously. This was just an image I got off Google for demonstration's sake. Let me five with that, and then we'll bring this to a one to four. Too much. There we go. I know subtle images, subtle changes may not seem like a difference, but once you start adding galaxy upon galaxy and effect upon effect, it, it does start, you start noticing it. So, do I want to do a layer mask? Yes, I do. So, bring this down to 126, and I want to kind of get rid of it around her ear. I want to kind of get rid of it around the top. Whoop, don't want that. Whoa, don't want that. Get creative with this, guys. Don't be uh, don't be afraid of your tools. Don't be afraid of it's just like any other art. There we go. And then back to the hue adjustment. Not on the layer mask on the actual image. And you'll know when you're on the layer mask instead of the actual image when you can't see or you can't select your options. So there you go. And so, did I go the wrong way? I went the wrong way. Huh. Dilemma. Huge dilemma. There's no... Okay. See, when you run into issues like this, this is where the beauty of the color tool comes in, or the color overlay thingy comes in. So, I actually like the color of the yellow-orange underneath the blue. I do kind of like that color. It does match somewhat with the other nebulas, and I'm thinking realistically the light is shining from above, so the light color, the galaxies and the nebulas from above are obviously going to be lighter in color than the ones at the bottom. So let me take the brush tool on a new layer, and I'm going to get that purple color. I'm just going to make an approximate guess. I'm not going to, I'm not going to color swatch it right now. That's too much work. Not all of you guys can probably agree with that. So then I'm going to just do that color, and right now that looks ugly. So just do color in there. See where it's supposed to go. So just bring down the opacity with that and then take your mask. This is why masks are so you. Again, you can use you know eraser tool. You can do you can do things like that, but I don't see the point in doing so when this is a whole lot easier. So I'm just trying to make this look as naturally colored as I can. Maybe I want to go hue saturation with this actual purple color because it's not the one I actually wanted. Like that. There you go. That's cool. Maybe I want to just darken this image a little bit. 
is a little bit a little bit more natural. So, so there you go. There's your basics of using Galaxy Image that are preloaded on DeviantArt on other stock resources, sites, and things of that nature. But now I'm going to get a little bit more in depth and a little bit more technical. If you guys want to just mess around with these kinds of styles and styling and the layer effects and the warp tool and hue and saturation and vibrance adjustments and things of that nature, feel free to uh, just do that. But if you want to really take your image up to a whole new level, just keep watching. Uh, I'll go a whole lot more in depth because I wasn't going to turn this into a project, but maybe I am because I'm really liking how this is kind of looking. So let's just go a little bit more in depth with this. So as you can see, with her hair, just her hair, when I added that color and I added that nebula, that galaxy to the top, it made all of her hair look extremely boring. And then it kind of makes this area near her right on the right edge kind of look like it's out of place. So I'm going to go back to that layer where I had the first nebula that I put in, go to the layer mask, and then get rid of that and make it look like it's behind her hair. Easy enough, right? And then do the same with the second nebula. So then the third nebula is on its own. And that one I already adjusted accordingly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to not avoid using nebulas, but now I'm going to start doing coloring effects and doing color work without the use of nebula images. So I'm just going to create a new layer. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the, col the purple color layer and the nebula it's coloring. And I'm going to make a group out of that. So a group from new layers, and I'll call this nebula 3. And I'll lock that because I don't want... I'll actually unlock all these layers because I don't want them to move anywhere if I'm on the wrong layer or anything of that nature. So, helpful hint. Do that. So, obviously my purple was wrong the first time. So I'm just going to go and bump it up a little bit. And I'm just going to click in areas. Again, clicking, not dragging. I'm going to click in areas that I feel should be colored. And then, color! So now her hair is completely purple in that respect, and I might do it, might as well do it on the side too. Okay. So as you can see, that looks pretty cool. That's that's kind of what we want to do, kind of, sort of, uh, but at the same time not, due to the fact that it is very, very heavily colored in comparison to the other effects, and her skin's purple, and her dress is starting to go purple, and we don't want that. But first, let's let me take a selfie. But first, let me drop down the opacity of this layer because I don't want it to be that prominent. I kind of want it to be a little bit of the peekaboo kind of, kind of there, kind of not. You don't know. Don't ask me. Kind of, you know, I'm trying to hide because I don't want to do my homework kind of feel to it. You know, that kind of effect. So I just add a layer mask to get rid of the color on her dress and on her skin because she, you don't want to give your models a purple armpit. I mean, if you do, then, then I guess you do. Make sure your model approves of it. Let's do that, and then they'll get rid of the background. And the reason I'm doing this is just to give it a little bit more realism, the image a little bit more realism instead of... Like, obviously, it's Photoshopped. But then you can make it look like it's very careful Photoshop. So there you go. But again, there is too much purple happening, too much. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to apply this layer mask because at this point I'm satisfied with what it's covering and what it's covered and what it's hiding. So I'll just apply it and then acts like the eraser tool just at one time. So all those areas are now gone permanently like if you were to use the eraser tool. And I'm just going to do a second layer mask. And don't ask me about doing the multiple layer mask thing. I have no clue how that works. Quite honestly, like, I, it's never, well, I know how it works, it's just it's never worked in my favor for doing effects like this. Let's put it that way. So, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go to Render, and I want to make the white my foreground and the black my, back, uh, my background color. And I don't know if this makes that much of a difference. It does in my opinion. You may not see a difference, but I do. So what I want to do on the layer mask, not the layer, not the actual colors on the layer mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter, Render, and then Clouds. And what that's going to do is going to start adding that little, like, you start seeing some areas more purple than others. 
So, like I said before, once you, you start adding these effects, it starts, you start changing your mind about how bright you want something and how bright you don't. Okay. So bring it down to 60. Works for me. So then add another layer, and then I'm going to do the oranges. So she's getting very orangey and very purpley. So I think that's the right orange. Again, trial and error, guys. Trial and error. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Whatever looks right, if it feels right, do it. You don't <laughs> use that very lightly. So this, I'm because as you saw with the RGB demonstration right at the beginning, the brighter, more orange or colors have the tendency to kind of stand out a little bit longer on a more broader scale than the uh, more greenish or more bluish colors. So, again, the blues have the tendency to pop up on darker areas faster. The greens tend to pop up and the yellows tend to pop up on the lighter areas more for a longer period of time, you know, like you saw in my demonstration. And then the reds and everything in between those have the tendency to just... They're, they take up a lot more. Their 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 range is a lot wider than all the other colors. So then we're gonna do color again. And as you can see, that looks all right. That looks, I guess. But I think I went. Oh, yeah. If you have this selected and you're using a mouse and you're scrolling, yeah, that's what happens. So go back to color. Scroll up. And I don't like how harsh some of these are because even though it's a soft edge brush, the smaller it is in size, the harsher the edge actually is. Uh, and you'll learn that the more you start messing around with different image sizes and things of that nature. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And that's just going to soften the, as it suggests, it's a blur, so it's going to soften the edges a little more. See, now we're getting that kind of bronzy, copperish kind of color, which means it's blurred way too much, pardon me. So then, I think a 25 would actually do really nicely. I like exact numbers just because I have, I usually I apply the same effect over and over again, like I'll apply this blur over and over again, and I want to make sure I have the right color that I did last time. Maybe I want to do that. That's at 100. Never mind, I don't want to do that. 15. Okay, we'll leave it at 15. So do that, and then I want more depth. I want more orange depth. So I'm going to go a little lighter, maybe two shades lighter. So this kind of yellowish, orangish kind of color, wash kind of color. And I'm just going to go in certain areas on top of this, on the same layer actually. And what this is going to do is I'm not going to apply it as much. I'm just going to apply it in certain areas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur it once more. So this one can go a little higher. Again, the yellows, the greens tend to show up a lot lighter and her hair, as you saw, there's a lot of highlights, so there's a lot of light grays within her hair, and especially because I said before, the light source is coming from the top, so it's going to, anything that pops up, looking up, is going to be lit a lot more. So we'll go to 25 for this one, actually. Then we have a nice, actually no, it's funny. And then we'll bring down the opacity to around an 85. Add a layer mask, and from what I see, there's nothing that's being colored that's not supposed to, that doesn't look too off. So if your model, again, what I'm saying now may not apply to your image because your image may not be, again, may not be as high contrasted as mine, or you may be working with a colored image. And maybe I'll do a quick how to achieve it with colors because black and white images are actually a little bit more forgiving when it comes to this just because it's more of like a spot color and, you know, people aren't expecting and you don't have to fight colors with colors, you know, skin tones versus gold nebulas and things of that nature. But right now for this image, to kind of finish this off, is we're going to go with back to render under the filter and then clouds. So there you go. And then what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go to Edit, Fade, Clouds. And yes, you can fade 
the different filters that you've done. So the opacity is at 100. 50 is actually really nice. Maybe I'll do 60, just cuz. Just cuz. You know, her hair looks all colorful. I'm not liking that top anymore, that third nebula. And when you're in groups, when you have groups, like I'd have that third nebula. Let me disappear that nebula so you can remember which one it is. Like that. Actually, it's good on its own. But when you have groups, you can actually use the effects on the group. So let's let's give it a color effect. See? Like you can do stuff like that. But pass through, I'm just going to leave it at pass through. That's the default. And I highly suggest that you leave it at that. And then I'm going to bring the opacity down to 65. See, now it looks a little bit more natural. Maybe the orange is a little off. Maybe, you know, you can always mess around with it. It's more of a reddish, so, or the red is more dominating. So go to adjustments, do saturation. Simple fixes, guys. And now we match the rest of the purple, which we don't want. So you can always just go in and fix the colors as needed. Let me say 20. 20. And then I'll go through saturation. That did nothing. Sometimes the saturation, sometimes these effects will work in your favor, sometimes they just won't do anything. If you've worked with Photoshop before and you've tried to do effects like this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, there's your basic kind of how to use color, how to use the color effect, how to use the color layer style, how to use the screen layer style to your advantage to pull off this kind of galaxy effect. Uh, you can use a color image for your galaxy effect, and I'm going to do that right quick just to kind of explain how to compensate for that. And I'll just use another Ariana Grande image since I'm here anyways. Let's use this one. No. Sorry, I wasn't planning on using a colored image for this tutorial, for this workshop, but I know a lot of people are going to want to do that. And I'm going to show you how to use, how to make your images black and white and things like that. Let's just go back to that. I'm not feeling these images. Is this just me, or does Ariana Grande kind of take awkward pictures? It's, it's not just me, right? Okay, let's just use this one, because it does. Have, she still has that kind of free-flowing kind of shape to her. So copy image. The beauty of Photoshop was Photoshop CS6, Photoshop Creative Cloud, and I think CS5 does this as well. I don't know if all the other ones, I don't remember doing it, but if you have an image copied, the preset of the new image will say clipboard, and it'll automatically have your dimension set and the resolution set as well. So here's the color mode, and I know I said I explained this, and I would explain this in a different tutorial, but we're here. So the color mode is RGB. You can set it to CMYK, grayscale, bitmap, or lab color. Typically, you're going to be working in uh, RGB for, sc for screen, graphics, web, you know, anything that's going to be shown on TVs, computers, cell phones, and then CMYK is more for your print. So we'll just stick with RGB because the colors are going to look funky once I paste the image. So there you go. There's a new document, so all we have to do is just paste the image. There it is. There's Ariana Grande from a Cosmopolitan photo shoot. I don't know. Don't even ask me. It just says Cosmopolitan on the bottom. So first things first, I'm the realist. Second thing. Making this image black and white if you want to make your images black and white first. There are different ways to do it. You can just select the image. Let me duplicate the image. Control J is how to duplicate it. Or you can click the image, drag it onto the new layer, and it will duplicate the image as well. But I'm only going to use this one just because I'm going to get rid of it real quick. So what you can do is you can go to Adjustments, and you can use Desaturate. You can either use black and white or desaturate. But black and white is a little bit more specific. This one is for more of your advanced users that really know, that really know, see like all the reds in her dress and her face and her hair had like more disappearing. And then the lighter you go. So this is more so for your advanced. If you really want to get detailed with how much is affected. But I know a lot of people, if you want to spend time to mess around with that, by all means, go ahead and do that. But I always just do desaturate. And as you can see, there is a lack of black in her 
Cosmopolitan is obviously in black because it was typed in black. So again, you can just go to adjustments, levels, and then fix that as needed. Or you can do the black and white thing. But I'm like I said, I was just going to get rid of that layer. So the other way to do it, the cheap way I told you how to do it before, is you can go and get the paint bucket tool on a new layer and then drop a whole bunch of black onto the layer. And look, she disappeared. She turned black. Turned into a black canvas. What you can do is you can go to color. And there she, was, she is. Black and white. Grayscale. But maybe... But you don't have to, you don't have to use black. Maybe black is too negative for you. And you want to do something a little brighter, so you can do white instead. You can do white. You can do color. Right. In fact, I think you can do all the solid grays. Yep. Darker gray. As you can see, this layer is changing, but it will still be black and white. I already showed you how to do a black and white area on the ground area on the ground image. So now a colored area on the ground image. So I'm going to try to use the same nebulas that I did before, just in different styles, because you can do that. Again, I just showed you how to use the warp tool, so you can warp these gal nebula galaxies in any way, shape, or form you want to make sure that it fits to your model's positioning and how they're posing and things of that nature. So copy the image again, paste it, and I'll paste it onto a new layer. See, the reason it fits within this image is because this image is larger than the other one, not because I copied a small version of this Im of the nebula, but because the image of Ariana is a lot larger. So screen again, and now see color theory. Back to the color thing. A lot of it disappears due to the fact that there is a color behind it, a light color behind it, and when you're using screens, you're combating light. Because, like I said before, multiply is for using darker colors and darkening an area, and then screen is lightening an area in a certain color light. So, again, color theory, understanding how light works. But as I zoom in, you can start seeing like the little specks of dust and the little bit of orange and whoa, whoa, that's not what it does. You can start seeing the purples and the oranges start to come out in certain areas, and where it's darker again, you can start seeing that. So. There's still a harsh edge there, harsh edge there, and I'm still going to use this image to my advantage and show how you can use it to your advantage. So I'm just gonna go back, adjustments, levels again, and you know the you know the drill. 25. The difference I would make though is when you're using light, green effect, galaxy, light on light is go up with your gray, not down. Due to the fact that it will brighten it even more. So there's not too many dark areas, and you can start seeing the galaxy a lot more. So instead of going down to 95, I went up to 1.10. And then I'm going to go to approximately a 30 with this, so that way it's a lot brighter. Again, I want to just start turning this. And as I move around in the dress, you can see the nebula start forming. But the moment I start getting into like the pink areas, it it it's disappears. It disappears. Maybe I want that one there. And this would actually be good for how I said earlier I didn't want that dust of orange there. This actually works. This would work. So that's the kind of advantage to using colored images if you were trying to do a galaxy effect than if you're trying to do darker image because the subtle well, it's dramatic on darker images than it is on lighter images. The dust, that dust of orange that I have got rid of in this image is now prominent in that image on her skin, but it gives it a nice glow, a nice kind of natural galaxy light glow. Make sure that's black. We don't want a whole bunch of dust on her face. Well, that was a mistake. Yeah, I make mistakes sometimes, don't judge me. And then we'll get rid of this down here. I don't like that, but I do like how it wraps right there. Maybe I want to just get down a bit. And then we'll do one more because I'm nearing the end of my hour. Wow, this went by really quick. So let me use a different galaxy this time instead of one that's previously used, just because this has kind of been screaming at me to use it. Waiting for it to load. Copy. 
And just as you can see on Google Images, it looks like there is black in there, and there probably was at one point. As you can see in the bottom left corner, black was probably the base color. But instantly you can tell just by the amount of stars and the amount of blue and the amount of clouds in the background that once you put it in screen mode, that it's going to have a harsh edge. So, whoa, this is a huge image. So, pasting, pasting. As I pasted it, as you see, if I hit Control T and I go into transform, start transforming the image, the center point, which is the crosshairs right in the middle, is towards the outside of the canvas. So, if you want it to really be pasted to the center, you hit Control Shift V. Again, I'm not used to Max, I wouldn't be able to tell you what the equivalent of that is, but you can do Control Shift V if you're using a PC, and then you can hit Control T, and then the crosshairs will be again right in the middle of the document. So there we go. And I'm assuming that would be the shape of her. And I think I'm right. Again, like you don't have to try to guess and check like I do. I just have experience and I've done this plenty of times as to why I'm teaching it, so I kind of can guesstimate um, a lot better than a lot of other people. But if you want to not guesstimate and figure out how it's going to look, you can go ahead and apply the screen effect because it doesn't, again, it's not permanent, so you can just go back to normal. But if you want to get like a preview while you're working on it because you can transform and still have the effect present. See what I mean? You can start increasing and decreasing. So then, like I said, you can either double click and it'll lock it, or you can click off, click to a different tool, and it'll say apply transformation. I don't want to apply. Maybe you do, but that's you. You do what you want. You do what your little heart desires. I'll move this a little bit. And then we'll darken it. Yeah, I, again, because of the what I said before about making changes and then changing what you wanted it to look like, that's why I don't start erasing or masking anything until after I made the changes. So, and before, just change the color right quick. I like that color. Okay, so then do a mask, and then I'll do this really quick, and then say salutations. All right. So just go with this little brush. And again, I'm just going in erasing the harsh edges just because I know, I know, like I said before, I click to erase, but that's when I really want to get in kind of detail with areas. When it comes to the harsh edge that's existent within the image, I want to get rid of that as quickly as possible, as soon as possible, so that now after I got rid of it, I start doing the subtle clicks. So, I think of it like painting. You have little dabs here and there to get what you need. And there we go. So we have to Ari Ariana, I was supposed to say something else, I don't know what I was going to say, but I was going to say something completely different. Uh, two Ariana Grande images with Galaxy, so I have one in color, one without color, going over screen and color modes and doing different adjustments with levels, hue saturation, vibrance, things of that nature. I hope I helped you guys. So let me get back on Google Hangouts to say my last goodbyes. Stop sharing. Okay, let it load. There I am. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so my friend Dominic just said Command T. So on Max, it's Command, not Control. PC is Control. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I hope this workshop was helpful for you guys. I hope you guys learned something new about Photoshop and uh, using effects and kind of understand how to properly compensate for different situations that you may be in when achieving this effect. Again, practice makes perfect. The more you work with it, the more the better you get at it, any crap like that. But if you don't have the software to practice this, you can go ahead and click the link in the description 
and there is a link to get a free trial of Creative Cloud. Trust me, it's not a spam link. It's not a virus. I, it's Adobe. You can get Creative Cloud and start getting a free trial of all the different programs that I'll be going over in this workshop series. So my next workshop, just to let you know, I already have a date for it. So it's next Thursday the 12th. Yeah, next Thursday the 12th. I don't know what to do though, guys. If you have a suggestion for me, uh, leave a comment down below, message me, uh, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter. You can do Tumblr or Facebook, anything of that nature. If you have my email, email me. Suggest something that you want to see done if you need answers to anything. If I get enough questions, I'll just do a whole Q&A uh, for Photoshop and Illustrator and Dreamweaver and things of that nature. But in the meantime, let me know what you guys want to learn. I know um, Dom was actually the one who requested to do something with lights, and there's a lot. So if you guys still want me to do like a whole light series, then just say that. Uh, so yeah, and if you want to join the Google Hangouts, while I'm doing my broadcast, then just let me know and I'll get you in on it. Uh, and it's a very easy process, don't worry. So again, link in the description down below to download a free trial of Creative Cloud and Adobe software, including Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, InDesign, Flash, Lightroom, Audition. There's a whole lot of them. There's a whole lot of different apps. You get Typekit, which is included, which is a whole access to different fonts that you can use in your projects. You can get a whole bunch of different resources, connect with other designers, connect with other resource providers. Also, check out shameless plugs here. If you want to see my work, like the different kind of light effects, if you guys need inspiration to suggest things, let me pull up. Let me share my screen once more before I start talking as if I'm... Okay, so let's share entire screen once again. Start sharing. Okay, cool. So you guys can check out my website at mycecrazycomikaze.com and I'll put a link in the description. And you can just go through my portfolio and start seeing the different effects that I do and you can just say, hey, can you do the one effect that you did with Madonna or, you know, can you do the one you did with Peace Poster, stuff of that nature. Or again, you can like my page on Facebook, that thing, or Instagram, Behance, wherever I post my artwork and then you say, hey, David, can you show us how to do this? And, I'll take into consideration for next week and later workshops. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, this workshop, and this will be archived on my YouTube channel, FTJ Productions. Subscribe to the channel every time. It will notify you every time I start a new workshop. So, yeah, have a good night. Have a good Thursday. See you guys next week.